everybody. Today I'm going to be doing a wrap up of the books that I read for middle grade March. Um, and I'm going to do kind of a ranking from what I liked the most to what I liked the least. So hi, my name is Talia. I love books. I love bandanas. I'm so glad you're at my channel today. Um, we're talking all things middle grade. Middle grade March is wrapped up. I read eight of the nine books um, that were on my TBR, which I'm pretty impressed with. Um, that's a good reading month for me. And um, yeah, I read um, just a variety of genres and I'm so excited to share with you what I thought of them today. Um, we're going from best to worst because I know statistically speaking, not everybody watches until the end of the video. Um, and the first few books, I really want you to hear about it. So thought about going worst to best to like, Fill with suspense but really I just want to talk about my favorites first and I want to make sure you hear about them so um let's do it first my favorite middle grade book that I read this March was Counting by Sevens by Holly Goldberg Sloan this book is amazing everyone should read it everyone will laugh everyone will cry um, it was so good. So we have our main character, her name is Willow, and she is, um, very, very intelligent. Just, um, knows everything about plants and everything about medicine and just very smart. She's like young middle school student. Um, and she's very, very wise because she's very, very intelligent and knows a lot of things. She has a hard time interacting with peers of her same age, um, and gets, you know, just can't really fit in with her um, students in her classes that thing and things like that. Um, so that's our main character very early, early in the story. She loses both of her parents and is orphaned. Um, and she doesn't have any other family, um, like no grandparents, no extended family that she can go live with. So, um, that's kind of what the story is about is her trying to find a place to live and figure out where she's going to be going as she's going through this traumatic loss of her um, losing her parents. Um, so it sounds like it's going to be really depressing, right? But this story made me laugh out loud so many times. So it, it she ends up finding a family with like her school counselor, who's like the worst counselor ever, like wasn't even wanted to be a counselor, doesn't care about kids. Like it's just like complete loser for a lack of a better word. Um, and then these two high school students whose mother works at a nail salon um, and they live like in this side garage so they don't really have like a place to live but they're willing to help her. Um, and um, then this taxi driver who ends up coming into the story along the way as well. Um, and the way the characters interact in this story and kind of their lives all weave together as they come together and like try to help Willow is just amazing. It was so heartwarming, so funny. Just, um, I could not get enough of it. I finished it in like a day. I just flew through it. It was, um, delightful, amazing. I definitely am going to check out other books by Holly Gore. Gold, by Holly Goldberg Sloan um because I feel like she probably can't do any wrong this book was amazing so that was the top book for the month um second book from the month was actually my audiobook which was my non-fiction middle grade pick for the month and it was When Stars Are Scattered by Victoria Jameson and Omar Mohammed um so this is the true story of um, Omar's childhood. He had to flee from Somalia um, really um, at a young age, I think at the age of like four, um, and ended up growing up with his little brother in a refugee camp in Kenya. Um, and man, it's just the story of life in that refugee camp and just the suffering they endured and how tough life was. And um, they they lost both of their parents, um, were unable to locate their mother and their father was murdered. Um, so, um, they were raised by like a foster mom in this, um, in this camp and 
it was just really, I will say, eye-opening. And if you do not know much about the refugee crisis, um, this book is definitely one that you need to read because this is a crisis that is real. And um, there are millions and millions of refugees in situations just like this. Um, a big part of the story was him like dreaming of when he finally accepts that he's not probably going to be able to go home to his, um, to Somalia. He's just dreaming of getting to America, getting to um, Canada, getting to somewhere else other than there. Um, and I think like it was really, I guess just humbling as being someone that lives in America and completely totally takes it for granted all the time because this is where I was born and this is all I know. Um, very humbling to hear like from the words of a child, like how much they wanted to come here and have like some of the things that we have here. Um, just really, really good. Really, really um, well written. This is actually a graphic novel. Um, so I want to pick up the graphic novel part of it soon because the like the physical copy because I feel like that would be amazing to read. Um, and this is definitely a story that I'm going to share with my children. So I will um, share it with them in that format. Um, that being said, the audiobook was really good too. I had like full music, full cast of characters, um it it was really well done it was a uh, very enjoyable um very enjoyable very heart-wrenching um read so loved it and yeah i definitely recommend um recommend that one to everyone as well okay um next on the list of books that i loved for middle grade march um a place to hang the moon by kate albus this is a historical fiction set in World War II. Um, we have three children who are orphaned during um, the war. Um, and they actually were orphaned quite a while prior to this story taking place. Their parents died when they were very young and they had um, been living with their grandmother who did not treat them very well um, for most of their life. Um, and their grandmother passes away and kind of similar to Counting My Sevens, they don't really have a place to go. Um, the difference in the story is um, they have money, like the kids have money that has been left um, to them by their parents and grandparents, um, but they need a home. So what ends up happening is during that time in London, I guess a lot of the children were evacuated out to the countryside because it wasn't safe in London with the um, war looming over them. So um, their solicitor and their housekeeper end up like concocting this, so they call it the preposterous plan, that they're going to be um, evacuated out into the countryside and they're not going to tell anyone that they're orphans. They're just going to say that their grandmother is still alive and sent them out to the countryside. Um, and they're going to see if they can find a family that they fit in well enough with that wants to end up keeping them. So um, they go out to the countryside and it kind of goes from there and they're not telling anyone, you know, that they are orphans or that they have money. Um, they're just being kids and um, trying to um, find a forever home. And it was just really, um, really good. Super sweet, super heartwarming. Um, not too sad. I feel like um, this could have been more sad than it was. And it really was like, I mean, they go through, the kids go through a lot of struggles, but in the end, it's just like really a heartwarming, feel good story. And also teaches you a little bit about World War II history in that, um, in that time frame in that area of the world. So really, really enjoyed this as well. Um, yeah, a lot of these books were library books um, or an audiobook. So there's a lot of books I'm gonna have to be purchasing to get um, for my kids eventually because a lot of winners. Um, I also loved Outside Nowhere by Adam Borba. Um, so this is about a kid and he, um, what is his name? I can't remember. Parker. So Parker is like kind of a slacker kid. Like right at the beginning of the book, he quits his summer job just because he doesn't really feel like he wants to do it. And he's like, I'm better than all this. Um, and so he gets sent, his father gets sick of his shenanigans and sends him to live at like this farmhouse in the country. Um, and he is required to work very hard for long hours, basically just weeding and planting radishes like all over the place. Um, and it goes from there. There's like a little bit of magic involved, which was fun. Um, not over the top. It's not like he's all of a sudden at Harry Potter world or anything, um, but little bits of magic sprinkled out and just his story of trying to figure out um, 
how not to be a jerk and how to put others above himself and how to respect authority and work hard and yeah highly recommend this one as well i really really enjoyed it so many like good just lessons sprinkled throughout so one i will definitely pick up for my kids as well okay next the mysterious benedict society this had been on my shelves for so long and i'm so glad i finally read it it was um the longest of my middle grade reads um but still under 500 pages nothing crazy um this was interesting because it was it didn't end up being what i thought it was going to be um some parts of it were like there were these kids and they are drawn into this mysterious benedict society and they are um they take all these quizzes and pass these tests to try to get through um into the society um and they don't really know what they're getting into they just know that all of them don't really have homes um i've read a lot of books about kids that don't have homes <laughs> like a lot of orphan children um but same story here these kids don't really belong anywhere want a place to belong and end up in this mysterious benedict society um so i liked it i liked it a lot i wasn't expecting it to be um it kind of had like these sci-fi elements like the bad guys are trying to like control the whole world with this crazy mind control machine thing um so i wasn't expecting that um and it wasn't like for me i was just kind of like well this is very unrealistic <laughs> <laughs> but it didn't stop me from like rooting for the characters and liking this story. I thought it was really well written, really well done. It kept me engaged to the very end. Um, stories of friendship and sticking together and sticking to your commitments, even if you aren't sure how things are going to play out. Um, I thought it was really well done. Didn't love it. Didn't love it as I loved some of the books earlier on, um, on this list, but I thought it was a good read. I think I will continue in this series at some point, but it's not something I feel like a rush to go do um, right away. Um, I liked a lot that the puzzles, like the puzzles at the beginning that the children are taking, they're puzzles that are laid out in a way that you could try to solve them. Like you could try to be like, okay, like what's the answer? Why is it not this? Like, where is it going? So it really, um, it really like was engaging and pulled you in um, at the very beginning and made you want to like think and try to solve the puzzles and mysteries of the book. So I thought, um, I thought that was fun. I thought that part was really well done. Um, yeah. So that's all I have to say about that one. The next book I have on my list is A Rover's Story by Jasmine Warga. Um, this was a group read for the official middle grade March. Um, and I am a sucker for like Mars research. Like I love NASA. I love like following all this going on with like Mars research and um, watching the Mars rover land recently and just like all those kind of things happening and seeing the pictures coming back from Mars and the helicopter flying on Mars. Like I love all that stuff. So this book was right up my alley. Um, it's about this rover and it kind of starts like with him getting built and having like this awareness of like oh, I'm a robot. What am I doing? What's going on? And he's like talking to this other robot. Um, and he ends up going on this mission to Mars. Um, so yeah, I thought it was really cute. I thought it was well done. I, it stressed me out because it's like, he was like, had all these human emotions and had all these human thoughts, but he wasn't able to communicate with the humans. And for some reason that really stressed me out. I don't know why, but I was just like, I wish the humans could hear what you were saying and communicate with you. For me, like if I had written this book, I would have made him able to communicate with the humans, which is probably silly, but that's how I would have done it because I was stressed out the whole time because like the humans were talking to him and about him, but it was him just like sitting there like thinking and not able to communicate with them. And for me, like if we're going for a magical story, um, and like a robot that has all these human characteristics and is like thinking for himself, then like you may as well just let him talk to the humans. So that was a downfall for me. Um, would still recommend this book. I thought it was a great adventure story and um, especially for young kids, like getting them interested in Mars um, cause there is so much exciting like space exploration that's going to happen in this emerging generation's lifetime. Um, I would t totally recommend this, but for me, that just bugged me. So take that for whatever it's worth. Okay. Next, I read The Castle of Tangled Magic. 
Um, this was okay. This was a fun story. Um, we have this castle and um, the main character ends up like discovering this portal into this other world where all these magical creatures have been kept um, and like all their magic is building and trying to escape and it's kind of like wreaking havoc and trying to tear down her childhood home. So she goes on this adventure, um, meets some new like fox friends and cat friends and like all these crazy fairy creatures um, to try to save her castle. Um, yeah, and I liked it. It was just, I didn't love it. I um, liked the character. I liked the story. For me, it wasn't one that I was just like, oh wow, I love this. I thought it was well done. Um, it was based on a lot of Russian folklore. Um, and it's funny because I liked it a lot better than the last book I read on Russian folklore. Um, the Bear and the Nightingale, which had like scary zombies in it. Um, so I liked how this was done better and I feel like it gave me a better understanding of some of the creatures um, in Russian folklore. I also liked it had like a, um, I didn't see this till the end, but I liked how it had like a glossary in the end um, of like the different terms. Um, so I thought that was um, super cute. Um, and yeah, I liked it. Um, I didn't really love it. I don't know why. It was just fine. I actually stopped reading this one halfway through and I read like three other books. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. And then I came back to it and I was like, oh yeah, this is fine. But again, I didn't, it didn't like make me super excited like other books have done. So there's that one. Last, my least favorite for the month, which was still a three star, so it wasn't that bad. Um, Nura, and the Immortal Immor Nura and the Immortal Palace. So this book is about Nura, and she is a child laborer. She works in like these mines, like digging for some sort of precious metal. I can't remember what it is. Um, lives in poverty with her mom and siblings. Um, and then one day digs too deep in the mine and gets sucked into like this magical world. Um, so again this one was fine it really I didn't love the character um I didn't love the magic system I felt like it was kind of um like sometimes there's magic systems and just like anything can happen like there's no real structure um and there's no real like rules and kind of anything can happen and does happen and it's just hard to follow for me when magic systems are like that um, and that's how I felt about this one. Um, I also didn't feel like there was a lot of depth in the characters and it was just hard for me to get into. Um, so I will say I didn't like this book, but I didn't hate it. And I feel like the lessons, um, through this book, um, particularly with child labor, um, were good. This author, this is her debut novel, um, MT Khan debut novel. Um, she's pretty young and I can see her doing great work eventually. I can see how she could develop as a writer um, and become really good. Um, and I will say like if this was the only middle grade book I had read this month and I had just read other random books like this may have been higher but I read so many other good books that this one just didn't make the top of the list for me. It was just it was just fine. It was a fun story not one I would really recommend not one I would really care to visit again. Okay so that's all I read. So if you remember on my TBR, there was nine books that I had that I had scheduled to read. I only read eight of them. The one book I did not get to was Pages, um, was The Book Wanderers by Anna James. Um, and I could probably squeeze this in still. I have a couple days left of March when I'm filming this, um, but I'm feeling just kind of burnt out on middle grade. Um, it's a lot of middle grade and I love middle grade. It's such a great escape, but I'm ready for a little bit different style of writing right now. Um, moving on to some different writing, um, different books that will not include middle grade in April, taking a break. Um, so I probably could have squeezed this in, but I want to wait until I'm feeling a little bit more refreshed with middle grade um, because I really think I'm gonna like this one and I don't want um, my just kind of like middle grade burnout to be, um, influence the way I feel about this in any way. So yeah, overall, I think um, Middle Grade March was a huge success. I read more books than I thought I would. Um, 
I loved the, just the variety of topics and the variety of lessons learned. And um, I've said before, but one of the reasons I read middle grade is so that I will have like a good collection of books for my kids when they're ready for some of these um, more challenging chapter books. And I think I definitely found um, some winners um, for that as well. So super happy, super excited. That is me. Um, I'm going to sign off on middle grade March for now. <laughs> so we'll see you next year. Um, no, you know, I'll probably will read more middle grade um, throughout the year. There's going to be more middle grade, but middle grade events later in the year as well. So um, I'm sure I will weave some more middle grade into my reading at some point or another. Um, so yeah, I hope you're doing well, wherever you are. I hope you take some time today to read a good book or two. And if you are having a bad hair day, just wear a bandana. Bye.